Hi guys, my name is Natasha, I live in the Russian Far East in the city of Khabarovsk and in this video I will tell you about Russian money and what it looks like. The reason why I decided to film a video about Russian money is because I need money is because learning about Russian money you can learn more about Russian geography. Not only because with it you can buy tickets and travel, but because Russian cities are depicted on the banknotes themselves. So, let's go! Russian currency is called ruble or rubль in Russian. One American dollar equals to about 70 Russian rubles today, which means that one ruble is 1.4 American cents. How much do Russian people earn? In Russia we calculate our income not per year but per month, so according to the statistics the average monthly salary of a Russian person is 43,000 rubles, which is $600 per month or $7.5,000 per year. But this statistics is official and, in my opinion, exaggerated because actually people earn less and many Russian people live from paycheck to paycheck. But let's not talk about sad things. And now I'll tell you about how ruble got its name. There are two versions for this. The first one is that ruble comes from a verb rubit, to chop, to cut. Because in the old times in Russia, a ruble was considered a cut-out piece of a civil bar called grivna, or grivna in Russian. Grivna was a measure of weight and a currency of the Kiev and Rus. By the way, grivna is a name of the contemporary currency of Ukraine. Another version of the word's origin is that ruble comes from a noun rubets, a seam left around the silver bullion after casting, which means that ruble meant a cast with a seam. One ruble consists of 100 kopecks, and I will tell you about kopecks later in this video. So, to show you Russian money, I decided to go to a place where people get their money, or lose, to the bank. I actually filmed it spontaneously when I was just going to the ATM to cash out my money, and I decided to film it and to make a video about Russian money, by the way, ATM in Russian is uh, bankomat. Bankomat. Okay, let's go to the bank. I decided to film as I'm going to a bank and uh, withdrawing money from my card. And this is Sberbank, one of the most common banks. It comes from Sberigatini, which is like saving, and bank, which is a bank. <laughs> So I decided to take 8,200 rubles. Now I'm looking for a place to sit and to pound this money and to show you how different Russian banknotes look. Let's sit on this bench. In Russia we have a tradition to place cities on uh, banknotes, so here you can see the city of Khabarovsk, the city where my university is, and this man is... I will go to another yard. This man's name is Vorobyov Amursky. He was a governor of the Khabarovsk territory and we have his statue in Khabarovsk and on another side of this node we have a bridge, a very important bridge which crosses the Amur river and comes from Khabarovsk to Birabijan and you can take a picture with this banknote on the bridge. So 5000 rubles or 5000 rubles is a pretty big note. You can have a good dinner with this money in a really fancy restaurant. Besides the official name, almost every Russian bill has its slang name. I heard that some people call it Khabarovsk, after the city of Khabarovsk that is shown on this bill. Let's move on. Now we'll tell you about another note. It's 2000 rubles or this note is even younger than 5000. It was put into circulation in 2017. This banknote has a nice blue color and it shows the city of Vladivostok. Like Khabarovsk, it's a city in the Far East that is a very unique port city with its own vibe. The banknote depicts the Ruski Most, 
Russian bridge, which connects Vladivostok with the island called Ruski. It's the longest cable stayed bridge in the world. Because of this, Vladivostok is often compared to San Francisco. One more similarity is that Vladivostok stands on the hills as well. And the other side of this bill shows to us the spaceport Vostochny, located in the Amur region, which is another region in the Far East. That's why it's called Vostochny. Vostochny in Russian means Eastern. This spaceport was built just recently, in the 2011. This cosmodrome was supposed to reduce Russian dependency on the Baikonur spaceport located in Kazakhstan. As you know, Kazakhstan was a part of the Soviet Union, but now, since Kazakhstan and Russia are two different countries, Russia decided to build its own spaceport in the Amur region. I honestly heard a lot of controversy about this spaceport, I heard about corruption or that it doesn't work properly. I don't know, like, they probably do something there, so we can't consider this spaceport our Far Eastern landmark. And now I will tell you about Adna Tisicha Rublei. The next node is 1000. And here we have the city of Yaroslavl. It's a very important and old Russian city. And on this picture, I suppose uh, Yaroslav the Great. And this building is probably something important in Yaroslav. And this is the coat of arms of that city. And on the other side, we have other sides of this city, some Orthodox cathedral. I personally think that 1000 has the best color. I just like it. 1000 rubles is called Kasar. You can say Tisicha or Kasar. Or what else? In fact, besides Kasar, Tisicha, or Tisha, 1000 Bill has many other slang names. It's funny that some people use the word ruble to name a thousand of rubles. So if you want to say 5000 rubles, instead of saying 5000 rubles, you will say just 5 rubles. 5 rubles. The same situation is with the word a piece or a thing used for 1000. Let's continue. The next face value is 500 rubles. In Russian, it's 500 rubles. We spell it like this, 500, but actually people pronounce it 500, almost like pizza, 500, 500 rubles. This bill shows the city of Arkhangelsk or Arkhangelsk in Russian. The name of the city comes from the Archangel Michael Monastery that was destroyed in the 1930s. Arkhangelsk is located on the north of European Russia, on the shore of the White Sea, and this is the monument of the Russian Emperor Peter the Great. On the other side of the banknote, there is Salavetsky Monastery, or in Russian, Salavetsky Monastir. It was one of the largest Christian citadels in northern Russia before it was converted into a Soviet prison and a labor camp in 1926. Today it's again a monastery, of course. The slang name for the 500 node is Pitsihatka. And this word has a very interesting story and not even all Russian people know about this. The story tells that in the 18th century in Russian Empire we had a banknote with a value of 100 rubles and there was a picture of the Russian Empress Catherine II. The name Catherine in Russian is Yekaterina and a diminutive of this name is Katya or even Katka. That's why people called by this word Katya 100 rubles banknote and when it's 5 bills with the value of 100 it is 5 Katka, so it's Peti Katka. That's why it became Peti Katka. Let's go to the next banknote. It is 200 rubles, 200 rubles. It has the same design as the 2000 banknote and it was issued in 2017 as well. This note has a pretty green color and it shows Sevastopol, the largest city of Crimea. There are disputes whether Crimea is Russia or not. I'm not competent in this question. What is more, I live 9000 kilometers far from this place, but I surely don't support the annexation of Crimea because, in my opinion and in the opinion of many people, it was a way for Putin to express his power and to raise the level of patriotism in souls of Russian Vladniks. But since Russian authorities consider Crimea a Russian territory, the Russian bank pompously placed Sevastopol on this new bill. So here we see the monument to the sunken ships in Sevastopol. And on the other side, there is a museum of Kersonesis, the city that was a colony founded by the Greeks approximately 2,500 years ago. Let's move on. Now I'll tell you about 100 rubles. 
100 rubles and here we can see the city oh yeah it's actually moscow this is the big theater большой театр a building of the theater in moscow and um, here we see i actually don't know what it is i should look it up in the internet i think it's some monument in moscow and 100 rubles is not that much it's about 1.5 dollars and you can buy I don't know, three loaves of bread with it. The slang word for the 100 note is just sotka, or maybe stolnik. Sotka, stolnik, or also sotnya, all comes from the word sto, which is 100 in Russian. It is an interesting coincidence that the Russian word for a capital, stolitsa, begins from the same three letters, S-T-O. So Russian stolitsa, Moscow, is depicted on the banknote with a value of 100 rubles. And now let's divide 100 into 2 and we get 50 rubles. 50 rubles. We spell it like 50, but when you're speaking in Russian fast, you can say 50 or even 50. This bill shows to us the city of St. Petersburg. Here we see the sculpture of Neva on the background of the Peter and Paul fortress. The statue of Neva is located at the base of the rostral columns, and these rostral columns, together with the building of the stock exchange, are shown on the back side of the bill. The slang name for the 50 rubles is Paltinik or Paltos. It comes from the Russian word Paltina, which consists of two words, Pol, which is Palavina, a half, and Tin is considered to be a word for a ruble, so in the old times they called 50 kopecks, which is a half of a ruble, paltina. But since kopecks are really small in today's Russia, we use this word for the note with the 50 rubles value. That's why 50 rubles is paltinik or paltos. But I want to draw your attention to the fact that these are the slang words and uh, in official speech you can say 50 rubles or not paltinik or paltos. And finally, we reach the smallest banknote with a value of 10 rubles, 10 rubles. It shows the city of Krasnoyarsk that is located in Siberia. Here we see the bridge over the Yenisei River and Paraskeva Pyatnitsa Chapel. And on the reverse side, there is the Krasnoyarsk Dam, or hydroelectric station. In fact, the tenderables bill is not issued anymore. In 2012, the central bank withdrew this bill from the circulation, so now we almost don't use them. In response to this, residents of the city of Krasnoyarsk decided to erect a monument to this banknote in their city. Okay, so now we know about Russian banknotes, and what about coins? Yeah, so and while I'm sitting here, I think I can also show you Russian coins. They have something in my pocket. I actually, I'm not sure what do I have. This video is a complete improvisation. So here I have a lot of <laughs> sunflower seeds, yeah. So in my pocket, I found that exactly three coins that I want to show you. I will show you from the biggest to the smallest one. 5 rubles. Actually, it's not the biggest one, because the biggest is 10 rubles. I will show it to you right now. So, 5 rubles. It's written here, 5 rubles. 5 rubles. And on the tail of this coin, there is a Russian coat of arms. A two-headed eagle. And it's written here, Russian Federation, Russian Federation, Bank Russia, Bank of Russia. The next coin, the smaller one, is 2 rubles. 2 rubles is almost the same, it has the same design, so it's 2 rubles. Next coin is 1 ruble, but these are not the only coins that exist in Russia. We also have kopeika or kope, and I will show you them just now. Kopeika comes from the word kapio, a spear, because these coins depicts a spearman. This is the Saint George, who, according to the legend, lived in the 3rd century AD and who was sentenced to death for refusing to recant his Christian faith. In Russia, we have coins with the value of 1, 5, 10 and 50 kopecks. However, these coins are very small and we don't use them anymore. In several cities in Russia, we have monuments to the Kopeika. For example, this one in the city of Irkutsk in eastern Siberia. People's love for the ruble is depicted in the monuments as well. We have monuments to the ruble in many Russian cities, such as Dimitrovgrad, Siktivkar, Novosibirsk, Tomsk and Barnaul. 
I hope this video was interesting for you and that you learned something new about Russia today. And I have an announcement. Since we are talking about money in this video, I decided to work as a teacher of Russian. So I will give Russian lessons online. If you are learning Russian or you want to start learning Russian, you can message me on Instagram or Facebook and all the links will be under this video. Since I'm a newcomer, the lesson price will be a little less than average. And the first lesson will be free because we will just get to know each other and develop the strategies suitable for your learning. I also want to invite you to my Instagram page of Ya Russia, where I post useful content about Russian language and pictures from my hometown. Okay, guys, this was a Russian money video filmed really randomly while I was going to a bank. I hope you enjoyed that. If so, tap likes, tap the bell, subscribe to my channel, and write your comments, and have a good day. Bye.